and welcome to the interview. My guest today is a politician, an economist, and a lawyer. He's known for being the longest serving Lagos State House of Assembly Speaker. He's also a member of the Governor's Advisory Council in Lagos. I am Moriah Afolabi Brown. Meet my guest after this break. Back. Welcome back. I have with me the former Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Adeyemi Sabit Ikuforiji. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Now, many people know very little about you. What most people just know is that you're the former Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about your background, where you were born, um, how you grew up, the whole works, and up until marriage. Well, thank you. Um, I'm a, a young man from Ekwe. Okay. I was born in Ekwe about 60 years ago. Wow. And um, my early life centered around Ekwe and uh, Lagos, which had always been our capital. I had my primary education at uh, LA Primary School uh, in Ekwe, and also the secondary education at Ekwe uh, Divisional grammar school. Okay. Um, I excelled in both schools at uh, the, uh, the final exams, uh, particularly the West African school certificate exams uh, in June 1975. Actually, I was the only candidate that made a division one, grade mm. one, in that exam then. Wow. Not only that, uh, Nobody made a grade one in the school for f the previous four years wow. before I broke the jinx. Wow. So after breaking that jinx, you know, uh, I mean, the school continued to progress, yeah, yeah. you know, and more and more of its uh, so students. So your parents were proud of you? Oh yeah, they were really proud of me, but then, I mean, to them, it's a thing of joy, but then it's something they always yes. expected because, right. uh, honestly, the truth is, I'm always a jinx breaker. Oh, wow. For my father, <laughs> uh, he had eight boys before me wow. that he had buried before Ooh. I came. So uh, wow. I broke that jinx of uh, the so called Abiku. Abiku. Right. So. Uh, uh, and they, they, they had prophesied if to him the type of po uh, boy he's going to have, wow. you know, to replace uh, the ones that he had before, and so about, on and so forth. Tell so, us about um, mm. the universities, what school did you go to, and how did you end up into politics? Well, after that uh, uh, performance in the, the secondary school, yes. I got an overseas scholarship the bilateral relationship scholarship right. between Nigeria and Romania. So uh, I finished secondary school in 1975. In 1976, I was given a scholarship, you know, um, to go to Romania. Eight of them were given scholarship that year. Uh, uh, four of them for engineering and architecture, three for medicine, and myself for mathematics. Um, we got to Romania and they sent four for engineering to one language center. They sent the three for medicine to another uh, language center. Mm -hmm. And then I alone for mathematics, I was sent to 
a place called Cluj Napoca. It's in the Carpathian Mountains and mm. very cold. Uh, University of Cluj. Actually, it was. It used to be known for medicine in those good old mm. days. There were lots of medical dec discovery that they had wow. uh, in that place. So uh, during the two months language course, I spoke with the dean of foreign students that I really did not want to be another chicken or be, okay. you know, a, a teacher of mathematics. Yes. I want to do a course, mathematics right. that I can apply in the right. industries. Right. And he said, you still like mathematics? I said, yes, I do, but I don't want that one that right. will make me a teacher. Right. So I want one that will take me. So he smiled and then he told me that there is a course which is relatively new and I might like that, that cybernetics. Hmm. Well, as an 18 year old, you can imagine, I mean, just the sound Oh, of the name of the course right. was was yes. <laughs> exciting yes. that cybernetics i've never heard yes. of a word like that in my whole life and i said hey what's that that he said yeah there you will do mathematics you do informatics wow. and you will be able to apply that in the industry that that's wow. a new I one mean, <laughs> now let's come to how you met your wife because mm -hmm. a lot of people know, well some people know that she's a christian and you're a muslim mm -hmm. and they still wonder how is that possible? In fact, no, she's not just a Christian, she's a pastor. And that in itself is news. Tell us, how did, did, she, did, she, did she end up giving her life to Christ or did you both start as Muslims or what exactly, how did that happen? Um, I met my wife through a friend's fiance. Okay. Uh, my friend who actually uh, was on scholarship at the same time with me. Okay. In 1976, we were okay. sent to Romania, he read mercy. Uh, Dr. Atoyebi. And um, his own fiancé was graduating mm. at uh, the University of Fife, then OAU now. And he just came back. And I said, okay. He said I should come with him, you know, to drive him to Ife. So we got to Ife. After seeing the fiancé, the fiance, she now said, oh, ah, they, you people should take me to my friend's place. She, we graduated together, but immediately after graduation, she's gone to England. Uh, now she's home for yeah. the, the usual convocation yeah. ceremony. So we went there, and that was the first time I met the... You're interested? Uh, was it love at first sight, or did you...? Well, I mean, honestly, if, if you know her, <laughs> and then you can just think back when she was, you know, just a young, it, uh, young girl, 20, 21, you see <laughs> that. Uh, she's still a very pretty woman, right. so right. <laughs> it's a, it's a Let our viewers believer, know yeah. how a home, a Muslim Christian home is, because during Ramadan, you wake up at night to pray, to eat, and doing her own Christian fasting period. I mean, how do you guys well, share the, the, it? The, the, the truth is, I married her in the church. Okay, so you knew. We had a church wedding. Oh, wow. And even before the wedding, uh, as a young uh, boy and girl dating, when we go to visit the mom, the mom was living in Ilefe then, uh, Sunday morning, we go with the mom together to the church, uh, wow. Anglican church uh, uh, well, in uh, Ileife. Okay. We go to the church together. It's after our church that we take our car and then oh, head wow. back to Lagos. I never saw any big do yeah. about, yeah, there are things that we even argue about, particularly with my mother-in-law. We used to talk a lot about uh, what this, what the religion says yes, here, or what it says yes. there, and I mean, we argued right. a number of things. And by the time we got married, yeah, my wife also tried to, you know, come into the Islamic uh, religion. Uh, uh, religion, but uh, I traveled out, I was in the U.S., yeah. and she got more yeah. into Christianity. Uh, Christianity <laughs> and, by the time I came back, I even met with uh, uh, the Jew of mm. our church. Wow. We got going. The uh, the old man right. got interested in me, and oh, wow. was always a that's, wow, that's wonderful nice. young man, brilliant. <laughs> this and so we got really close. close. So it was 
not something that I can wake up and say, ah, you can't go to church right, or you. Right. No, I mean, yeah. because of some yeah, of the those, the, the relationship built. Right. was built. So since you left office, what's been life been like? Um, what do you do? People always assume, okay, after office, there's really nothing much going on. Could you tell us a typical day of the former speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly? Well, um, since I left office, I've been very, very busy. Don't forget, I'm still a politician. <laughs> I'm still a member of the uh, the GAC yes. uh, in the state, and uh, I'm a leader in, in my constituency. Right. So in my last year in office, right. I enrolled at Unilag to read law, hmm. and I finished wow. last year. Fantastic. August, September last year. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And uh, since November, I've been in the Nigerian Law School. Uh, by the grace of God, the final exam, the bar two exams, coming up August this year. Mm. Just few weeks to go. Wow. And I mean, that's I, inspiring. I, I, aside from that, I had registered with Liverpool Business School for my uh, doctorate in leadership since uh, 2013. That. I had successfully completed just this last uh, two weeks mm. by the grace of God. And yeah. that, okay, that we're going to go it. on a short break. When we come back, we we'll dig into politics with the former speaker. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I see you have with me Right Honorable Adeyemi Ikufereji. Thank you, sir, for staying on the show with Thank us. Thank you, ma'am. Now, politics. Um, the last administration was, was a, a lot of mess, people were saying, the, towards the end. Um, but before we even get into that, you wanted to be governor of Lagos State, and um, you tried to get the ticket. Um, in your own view, during that period, what, what, what caused... What, what cost you that ticket? What, what, what happened that you didn't get the ticket? I think I tried my best then, and I am still proud of the efforts I put in. Mm. Uh, though in this part of the world, we hardly go deep into anything. We, we live just at the surface. Mm. So to us, for example, people contested for the ticket, Mm, they give the ticket to somebody, and that's so just it. You don't look at yeah. w w w what really transpired. Right. right. Now, um, a lot of people had issues with you some years back uh, during the Fashola administration in Lagos State because you practically championed the, impu in the possible impeachment at the time. And a lot of people who were like pro fashola were like, ah, who is this speaker safe? What, what, you know, there's a lot of drama going on that time. Help us clear the air because why did that happen? And what, and looking at it, juxtaposed it with the current, the just recently passed governor of Lagos State. What exactly happened that your, your, your assembly was adamant at the time to impeach former governor fashola? The honest truth is, as at the time, Many went to town shouting, they want to impeach Fashola, they want to remove him, they want to do, this, do that. It was all market rumor. Mm. There was no iota of truth in it. Mm. Yes, the governor then may also have believed that we were planning to impeach him. Yeah. But I tell you, and I'm saying this, we, uh, many years passed, there is no, no, nothing to, to do about impeachment today. I'm saying this with, I mean, as, as, a, as a man of God, as a man who believes, as a believer, that there was no iota of truth in it. Mm. Look, Fashola was the only governor our party had mm. as at that time. Out of 36 governors in the Federation, the only one we had, don't forget, we're coming from an era when 
we had virtually all the governors in the southwest was in our party but as at the time you were talking about about the impeachment and this and that fashola was the only governor he's only a stupid politician that we think of impeaching the only governor that the party has Bad. in the federation if you impeach him what reasons will you give to the people are you going to tell them is a thief <laughs> what does that yeah, tell right. the the people that your party is a party of thieves mm. and don't forget even as at the time he was there i was also not seeing the ambition of becoming a governor mm. it would have been so stupid right. of me as a speaker to impeach a governor don't don't ever forget this fashola was so popular right so how could you a speaker yeah. who wants who knows the ambition of be, yeah, being a governor now go a, ahead and impeach mm. a popular governor, governor. <laughs> i get the point so it, it was all a rumor mill yeah. that produced yeah. that okay. yes we had issues yes we had things that you know uh, uh shook us yes but not to the point of impeachment impeachment okay. he, he he was okay he was doing well as a governor mm. and he was very popular mm. okay. but of course uh it also gave us uh it, it made the government better it it made the governor you know sit to sit up and do better and it made the house also to do his uh uh, Let me, uh, I, I, want to get to, I want to get to the issue of legislature because um, in recent times we've had lots of House of Assemblies across the country just coming up with all sorts of laws that the people are totally against. Um, package, juicy packages for their for lawmakers when they leave office. In your, in your, in your view as a former Lagos State um, Speaker of the House of Assembly, do you think it's a good idea at this time? That's a very interesting one also. But let's get some things straightened okay. out. A lot of noise come up in this country over nothing. Mm. It was under me, as the leader of the house, that the house made the law to take care of the governors when they leave office. And I didn't make the law then to take care of the speaker of the house. I didn't make the law to look after the deputy speaker of the house. But we, we need to straighten things out in this country. We keep mixing the old wine with the new ones. It doesn't work that way. I held the office of the Speaker of Lagos State for a decade. No governor of Lagos State will stay a decade in office. And just as the governor heads the executive arm, the Speaker was the head of the legislative arm. And you have the chief judge as the head of the judiciary. Anything that goes to the governor or that goes to the chief judge doesn't get mentioned. But if it is for the house, for the speaker, it becomes more of a noise. But go back and look at the constitution. The way it is, you have made the house the watchdog over the other two arms. If we take care of people who are in one arm or two arms, why will you leave out the ones in the third arm? Is it temporary? Well, they're both temporary positions, actually. There is no opposition that is not temporary. Right. Look, the, uh, I was in an uh, argument yesterday with some colleagues when they were talking about, hey, what goes on 
yeah, well, how well, in the in the judiciary, if you become a Supreme Court judge, uh, the justice of the Supreme Court, that the amount of money that the government spend on them is so much and this and that, and I call them call their attention. How much is so much that we are talking about? A justice of the Supreme Court of this entire nation. You don't want the government to provide accommodation for them. You don't want the government to take care of their needs. But sir, uh, let me let me pause it, you for a it, second. It, in, in a country where there's poverty in the land, people just just wonder that shouldn't we tighten our belts and see our leaders also tightening their belts? So they have a lot of the, the criticism is saying that you, you, you see, the, that you are too you, generous you, with you, what you, was allocated to the governors of Lagos State. That was way too generous. But look at it this way also: the governor of Lagos State is such a powerful human being for the four years that is there or the eight years that is there. This is a man who sits over. Uh, 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 a, a, a trillion naira budget a year. A man who gets in, a, he has a revenue of over a billion naira a day. We talk of corruption. When you put this at, at the door, the the the, uh, the, the, full, the the full stool of a man, mm. and you don't want to take care of the man, or you want the man to take care of himself before leaving office. Mm. Which one do you prefer? Okay. And what is it that we actually give to the retiring governor of Lagos State? That, okay, we can get him a house in Lagos. We can uh, give him a new, car uh, a new car every three years or mm. something. It, that's what we are saying. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Chief executives of Corporations that are far smaller, they get more and they live even better. I think we need to take care of our leaders. Okay, as far as this let's talk about concerned. your issue with EFCC. And I know that uh, last year, I think the Supreme Court ordered a retrial. Uh, I know you can't talk about your case, but why is it taking so long to prove your innocence? You, you accused of. Uh, I had proved my innocence. And the, the High Court, the Federal High Court, had agreed with my innocence. Okay. And let me just straight, get this straightened uh -huh. today. Right. Look, I was not charged for embezzlement. Okay. I was not charged for stealing. I was not charged for any form of mismanagement. Okay. What the EFCC said was that we were collecting cash above the threshold which was 500,000 naira. If we're going, for example, going for a course abroad and the speaker's uh, 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 allowance. total allowance mm -hmm. for ticket, for the course, for extra code, if it comes to say 3.5 million mm -hmm. and the one for member maybe a member gets 2.5 million mm. and 10 of us are going the 10.5 times the 10 members plus the speaker's own are added together and a check is issued right. by the accounts department of the house and the check is sent to the bank right. and the bank majorly Wema bank then or sterling bank brings the money to the house right to the accounts department of the house and each member mm. goes there to collect. to collect and sign right and the documents were all there there was no thing in fact my own well i mean as the speaker of the house i wouldn't be going to the accounts department so my pa will go right. and collect right. what is due to the speaker mm. so for collecting that cash yes, yes. from the accounts department of the house is what EFCC, EFCC okay. after investigating the house for three months and a week, and they did not find a single item of one million naira investment or, or misuse of funds. 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure much. chatting with you. Thank you very much. So I've been chatting with the former Speaker of Lagos State Assembly, Right Honorable Adeyemi Kikuvroji. It's been an honor chatting with you, sir. Thank, Thank you so you much for joining us on the program. We'll see you next week. Have a fabulous time.